On Blast. This is Fall on Blast, part of the On Blast Podcast Network. Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you like it, then subscribe and tell your friends. Holla. On Blast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind for tuning in once again to this little thing we like to call the Ball on Blast Podcast. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander. I'm joined by my boy. Andrew Webster, Webby, what is good? Not much, man. It has been like a month and a bit since we last talked, and that's crazy because we are getting into my favorite season of the NBA, and that is beef season. (laughs) It seems like, doesn't it seem like every night somebody's getting, hold me back. No, oh, McCallum every... brought this up the other day that it was because I, I remembered it last year and he said it was remember we were making the jokes because it was around Martin Luther King Day. That's and it right. Was like the NBA, it's like, hold on, you guys got to chill. If all the days y'all want to be fighting and messing around with these there was like fights, it can't two be fights. King yeah. <laughs> so I think what it is, is like you have this big, long stretch from when the season starts through Christmas, and then everybody just wants to get to the all-star break, and yeah. people get a little chippy and a little, you know, uh, nobody's taking any shit, and everybody just wants a little bit of a rest. That's but the they, only way I can put it. It's also, too, I think people get a little feisty around this time just because yeah. it's like your season settled in, and you kind of know by now whether your team's for real or your team's heading to the lottery. And either way – that makes you feel some kind of way. Do you know what I mean? Like well, if either... you're playing hard every night, you're either playing hard every night to try to get to the playoffs or you're playing hard for your contract next year. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And either that or you're playing the Oklahoma City Thunder and Russell Westbrook's going to get in your face about something. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, I, exactly. I think right? he was even talking trash to just Portland residents the other night against the Blazers. <laughs> Hey, I love Russ so he much, went man. up and down the bench. He had words for everybody. Oh, for sure. Oh, and Russell how would great be a topic for a dis- for a discussion for sure. Oh, gotta be. He versus the Blazers, Russ versus Sixers, and Bead. Oh, we will get to that for sure. But anyways, <laughs> let's get to let's get to the shits, right? We're taping this on Thursday. People will be hearing this on Friday, and obviously, the big news on Thursday is the NBA announced their starters and captains for the 2019 All-Star Game, right? Any surprises in terms of the captains for you? Well, the captains are selected by All-Star votes, right? Right. And LeBron James led the way in the West. He was the overall leading vote-getter. And Giannis Antetokounmpo led the way in the Eastern Conference. Did I get that right? Nailed it. Nailed it. So those are your two captains in both conferences. And how this will work is it's Team LeBron versus Team Giannis. And then the starters were also announced. Now, the starters still get picked. There's 10 starters were selected via a vote, which is 50% from the fans, 25% from the players, and another 25% from basketball media. The two starters with the most fan votes in each conference, obviously, James from the West, Giannis from the East, they're captains, and they will pick from this starters pool, right? Do we know who has the first pick? Do we know does LeBron gets a first pick as the captain, as a leading vote getter? I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure LeBron, because he's a leading vote getter, gets the first pick. I figured once um, your name, if your nickname is the King, they just give you the first pick. But get right, busy. That should be how right, it works. Right. <laughs> it only makes sense that way, right? So let's find. They also unveiled who the starters were in each conference. And so the starters are, even though the, you're picked East and West, you're going to be put into an overall yeah. pool picked playground style, right? So in the East, joining Giannis was Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker, Kawhi Leonard, and your man's Joe. I got to be. Joel of course. Um, do you agree? Do you like that starting five for the quote unquote East? But in terms of, do you think those are the guys that deserve to start for the Eastern Conference? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, we're gonna, I guess we're going to talk about it uh, in a, pretty soon, but I maybe would have had Oladipo over Kemba. Yeah. But, okay. but Kemba's beginning of the year definitely, uh, definitely well-deserved for him to make that spot. Uh, so I, I don't really yeah. have any qualms. I mean, in the East, it was pretty clear-cut who it was going to be, I felt. Yeah, and I think, too, I really like this setup by the NBA because 
you know, people kind of get up in arms when you start to see the voting and you see some odd names maybe higher than they should be on the voting list, right? Like, there's some talk, oh, is Dwayne Wade going to get in? Obviously, in the West, there was uh, uh, Luca and Derrick Rose were high up right, on Derrick the list. Right, Derrick Rose had tons and, of votes. Right? And and you know those guys shouldn't start. But I like the way that they rig it with the, with the breakdown in terms of how these guys get in because you could just rig that if you're the NBA. Right, for sure. Fifty percent from the fans, twenty five oh, yeah. from players, twenty five from the media. You rig that for sure. Right? Exactly. So I think that's cool. And at the end of the day, I like the the starters. Right, Kyrie is having an exceptional year. Kemba Walker is doing big things in or for the the Hornets. I was about to call them the. He's Rockets been. I, I think since he he tweaked an ankle, didn't he, a couple of months ago or a month or two ago, and he hasn't been quite as on fire as he was to start the year, but. Just his first half numbers have been pretty stupid. Yeah, man, it's been pretty crazy to see just the development in Kemba's game too, right? And Kemba's a guy who, you know, added the three-point shot much more to his game this season, right, as a lot of the NBA has. But he's taking the three a lot more and making it, and it's obviously boosting his scoring average. But he's become such a lethal scoring weapon. And that team, you know, the Hornets – the Hornets are, have kind of been a weird team for years, kind oh, of yeah. in that middle ground, you know, the, not even middle ground, but it's like, well, I guess middle of the Eastern Conference in terms of 7 to like 10, 11, you know what I mean? They, they're kind of there each year, and right now they're in seventh place, and it, it's it's good to see them in the playoffs. Like, I like Kemba. He's a guy that you like. Do you know what I mean? He's a likable Ever dude. since UConn days, of course, a really likable exactly. cat. Exactly. And I love that he's on Jordan's team. I think that, like, he's a good exactly. fit for MJ's team there in Charlotte. Yeah, and the thing, too, I remember we had Jay Triano in studio on Tim and Sid earlier this year when the rap, when uh, the Hornets were in town, and Triano's now an assistant with the right. Hornets. And he talked about – he used Kemba as an example of the fact that, you know, he said every – star player that he's played with so far like there's a common thread and he he obviously was in portland before and he said the same about dame lillard but in reference to kemba he said these guys want to work like they're calling you as an assistant coach to be like hey coach you ready yeah. yeah let's go work out hey coach what do you see in my game here what should i be working on next what can i right and they want to improve like they're seeking that advice and so it's cool to see that you know come to fruition and see Kemba take his game to a next level to being an all-star starter. That's yeah, cool. absolutely. You put in the hard work and watch it pay off. And I think the 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 other three three front court players between Kawhi, Giannis, and JoJo, I think they have they've all been kind of up there in the MVP talk. I'm not going to say like MVP winners, but you know, Giannis definitely. But Kawhi and JoJo have had moments this year where they're you could talk me into them being what top five MVP vote getters. No. Yeah, absolutely. Every time my man Embiid steps on the court, it's an MVP performance. <laughs> amazing, Fucking love amazing. It. If we take an early look at who uh, the reserve should be, Webby, I'm looking at this board here that they had up on TNT, and you know we we love we give mad love to to the TNT crew, right? Solid, of course, solid entertainment. But the way that they had it broken down is basically in the East. If you they all agreed on Bradley Beal. Uh, Blake Griffin, Kyle Simmons. Lowry, Chris Middleton, D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons, and Victor Oladipo. Obviously, we know take we'll Oladipo the, out. Take the Ola, take Oladipo out. But that mm -hmm. leaves two spots, which they basically split on. Uh, well, I guess both those guys would get in because mm -hmm. they. If you have two spots, they're splitting on Vucevic and Spencer Dimwitty. Did you say D'Angelo Russell? I did say D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're in on he's, that, right? He's had yeah, 100%. Right no, I'm in on the Nets is what I'm in on. Yo, man, the Nets are in sixth place. I'm not mad at the Nets. 23 right now, the Brooklyn Nets. Like, how cool Who's my is guy? Krutus? Kuruks? <laughs> I don't know that dude. Oh, name. yo, he's sick. I don't know that yo, dude's he's name. good. But I, I know who you're talking about, but I don't know that dude's name, man. He's but, good. The way that that team plays, and Dimwitty, he's great off the bench. He comes in. He could probably be a starter on now, a lot I'm of Now, I'm surprised teams. you're not saying Siakam. Here's my thing with Siakam, right? And and it's not a knock on Siakam. It's more that I feel like he's he's getting over – like, he's getting too much hype than really? Serge Ibaka. Like, Serge Ibaka's numbers are just as good, if not better, than Siakam's. It's just that – 
Siakam's like the nice new toy. And we didn't really expect this from Siakam. Whereas Surge, there's part of us as we watch Surge, we're like, this is how you should have been playing all the time. Yeah, but I I find that even still you're getting that for maybe two-thirds of the time he's out on the court. There's still a lot of third of surge that I'm getting where it's like, man, it's like just (laughs) do what you should be doing. Meanwhile, with Siakam, it seems to just come so easily to him, just what he should be doing. Well, I give a lot of credit to that to Kyle Lowry, right? I feel like Kyle Lowry does a really good job in putting – both Serge and Siakam in positions in the right, to succeed, yeah. right? Yeah, 100%. And that's been a real key to the, se- to the season. But also, Webby, then you're in a situation where you have three Raptors. That's kind of tough, no? Shouldn't Why shouldn't you have three? I, I See, I'm very surprised. I figured you would be standing out to have as many Raptors up there. I know that they've kind of taken a little bit of a downward turn here, kind of yeah. towards, you know, in the new year. Uh, now yeah, tied December with... they had a kind of tough December. Yeah, now tied with the Bucks, but I mean, still tied for first in the Eastern Conference. I, I would think I I thought three Raptors were. I think three Raptors are going to be in the All Star game. I'd almost be surprised if Dimwitty made it ahead of Siakam. Yeah, I mean, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see because I mean, it really comes down to the Oladipo being out is definitely a thing too that changes, right? But now, do you have to fill Oladipo's spot with someone else from? The Pacers, right? Because you're talking about the third place. Oh, team. Sabonis. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if you do that or if you just accept the fact Turner, that hey, even you Turner, name but... him, you name him to the roster, and yeah. you just replace him with anybody. But at the same time, that's a third place team, and Oladipo is putting up what, like 18 points per game. Yeah, he's the best player, but that is still a great team. Yo, Sabonis right? has been awesome this year. So um, that'll be interesting, right? Do now, you what about off Jimmy? The Miami Heat? The Heat are in eighth place currently right now. Do Justice you just Winslow? give it to Dwayne Wade for his last yeah, dance? I, yeah, you do, 100%. You, know I mean? you, got, you got to give it to Dwayne Wade. Now, what about Jimmy Butler? Again, I don't know if you can get three Sixers, Webby, for the fourth place team. I don't know, man. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm not against, mad at that because I'm, I'm against about putting, superstars, and I think that if you, if you go to an all-star game or even as a fan watching on my couch – I want to see superstar, so I'm not necessarily mad at that because I think no, Jimmy no, no. Butler is a superstar. I but... wouldn't even want Jimmy in the. I don't think that he's played to an All Star caliber level. Oh, okay. I really, I, I don't. I'd rather see a guy uh, like I. I'd rather see a guy like Sabonis who's having such a great year in a in a different role for him. Yeah. Uh, and I'd rather see Dwayne Wade for sure. Yeah, I think it'd be a cool thing to, to have D. Wade get into the All-Star game just because, you know, you're talking about one of the greatest two guards ever to play the game. And that'd be kind of cool in his last dance. And I know, again, I'm about superstars. I'm about storylines. It'd just be kind of a cool scene. So I'm I'm all for that. The other thing is two Brooklyn Nets would be kind of weird. D'Angelo Russell and Spencer Dinwiddie. Yeah, it's exactly. It's interesting. Do you get we, two Celtics in there? I don't know. It's, it's tough. I've, it's interesting. I really like I really like the Nets and what they're doing this year, but you're right. Like Spencer Dimwitty, yeah. Know. The East is going to be super interesting, and you could be right. Raptors fans could be in in for a treat where you get three All Stars in the in the All Star game. Like that'd be crazy. But uh, let's switch gears here and go to the Western Conference. Webby, is that cool? Uh, yeah, man. So Western Conference, the starters were named. And, Again, LeBron James being the captain, he will be joined. Well, he won't be joined necessarily, but he was joined in the starters pool in the West by James Harden, Steph Curry, Paul George, Kevin Durant, and that's it. Yeah. See, I'm more. I'm very surprised here. Okay. I'm, I'm very surprised that Anthony Davis didn't make it. Okay. And do you think that the comments that he made uh, a couple of weeks ago had any impact on that? Because – I just looked at the – they had the breakdown of the numbers for the voting. Okay. And for fans, the the fan rank had Davis fifth. Okay. But but the player and the media had him third. Ooh. And I mean, mean, listen, I understand Paul George is having, like, a great season. mm -hmm. But I think that that's Anthony Davis' spot. I disagree with you, Webby. And the reason I disagree with you is because I think Paul George is having such a great season for a team that's in third place. He's he's like Russ will always be the face of OKC, but I think this year Paul George is showing that he's the best player on OKC. 
You know what I mean? Like he's their go-to guy. Paul George is the best second banana in the NBA. But what I'm saying, do you understand what I mean though? Like he's having but such you're a good about, year this year. You're talking about superstars, and you're taking one of the the biggest and best superstars in the NBA and not putting him as an all-star starter. I don't under I. True. Like, you know what? The thing is, he'll still make the all-star game, but mm-hmm. I guess it's a little bit of a penalty because there's no way that an Anthony Davis-led team should not be in a playoff spot. Right. That they're 22 and 26 right now. Like, that is, no. Like, you're behind the Timberwolves, right? Not- you're behind the Kings. You're behind the LeBronless Lakers, who basically have just tanked the past month. <laughs> you mean the Kuzma, the Kuzma Lakers is what we're right? calling them now. No, no, no. But here's been the out thing. since Christmas. It's about to be January twenty fifth. No, did here's... LeBron get hurt on Christmas Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. tweaked like, it on Christmas it's... Day. <laughs> That's crazy. Here's so... my thing, though. Here's my thing, though, and it may be because I'm a basketball purist, but okay, I you got like you got to have a center. I'm not. I'm not. I don't really. You know, you're going. I don't buy into all that. Really, I don't. and I no. know that like Davis want, but like. You just – I think you got to have a big man. Well, I mean, LeBron, no? No. <laughs> LeBron plays a four. God. LeBron plays a, plays a LeBron's four sometimes, gonna be, LeBron's going to be point guard on the team. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, they got Steph and Harden. Man. Yeah. No, they – yeah, neither well, of those Harden's guys – definitely – Neither of those guys going to bring the ball up. <laughs> no, it's going to be fun to watch, man. That's crazy. I would – you know what? It kind of sucks because I'd like to see that those five guys as a team. I feel like that'd be a dope team to watch. Harden, Steph, KD, Paul George, and LeBron. That'd be dope to watch those five guys on the court at the same time. But Who's going to be that, the first pick? Who's going to be LeBron's first pick? I think he picks KD. And then everyone goes crazy because everyone's like, oh my God, is KD going to go to the Lakers? Not, Does this mean KD's going to the Lakers? Can you imagine he gets KD and Kyrie? <laughs> Or if he picks Kyrie just to troll everyone because of Kyrie's comments a couple weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think. LeBron, that'd be amazing. And then, so that then, would be amazing. And then he'd also have to get Anthony Davis as well, right? Because of the whole clutch sports thing. Yes. Right? Yes. In, that, in that two second. Picks, Katie and Anthony Davis. <laughs> well, now, would Anthony Davis be in that, like, second pool of players that they go through? Yeah. So yeah, okay. the second pool, let's go through. They all seem to agree on who should be the West starters for the first, what, five people here. And they all agreed on Anthony Davis, Nikola Jokic, Damian Lillard, Clay Thompson, and Russell Westbrook. Now, hold so on. So that leaves hold two on. spots. Hold on. That leaves two spots, right? And the names that came up on their list was Rudy Gobert, Tobias Harris, Donovan Mitchell, DeMar, and LaMarcus Aldridge, and Luka. Oh, you saved the best for last, man. It's, so there's two. There's Luca's, two spots Luca's there. in. You just there's one spot. Luca's taking that one of those okay. spots. So who gets the last spot then? Hmm. Between Gobert, Tobias Harris, Demar, or Lamarcus Aldridge? No, Stephen Adams. Ooh, you want three OKC players? Okay. I mean, rather or than Jamal Lamarcus Murray, maybe Aldridge, maybe might get some love. Maybe Ooh, Jamal Murray might get some love. I like that. So, I'm looking it's interesting, here. Though. Demar, it's hard. it's hard. You might have to put a spur in there because they're up to. The Spurs are in sixth the, place right now. Yeah, sixth place, even after they got. So who? Beat. So who's the all star for the Spurs? Is it Demar or Aldridge? No, nah, it's got to be Demar. It's got to be Demar. Yeah. Okay. Yo, Lamarcus sure. Aldridge is washed. Get him out of here. I'm not, I'm Get not him out of here. Lamar- I'm definitely not here to gas LaMarcus Aldridge. No, again, we talk about <laughs> superstars. We talk yes. about superstars. Would you rather see LaMarcus Aldridge or Luka Doncic in an all-star game? Come on, man. I'm on Team Luka for sure. I've been converted. I, I Pasty or what do we say? I was, Pudgy or white? Uh, what was it? Doughy. Doughy, it doughy? doughy or white. Was that it? I that was it. Remember. Doughy or white. Yeah. I admitted a few pods ago, I don't remember if it was the podcast that was lost in space, but um, I admitted I was wrong about Luka Doncic. I was just like, I need to see it in the NBA before I'm just like, oh, yeah, this guy's the number one pick and there's no way you could pass on him. Like, I needed to see it first. And damn, I'm seeing it now. I was wrong. It's good. Um, He is good. So, yeah, no, I like. Who's the first pick? Who's the first pick? 
What do you mean? If I'm LeBron, who's, who am I taking? Yeah, if you're LeBron, who are you picking? Are you going with the troll angle? Because I think uh, that's what you got Oh, yeah, I think so. Just to LeBron get it, loves just to, yeah, If nobody likes – yeah, nobody likes the media spotlight more than him. But the only thing is, is that if he does these picks, he's going to make his own half an hour TV show on HBO about him picking Kevin Durant. That's got to be the way he does this. <laughs> well, you do know that they changed it up from last year where next Thursday. Is it next 7 Thursday? On TNT, there's an NBA all-star draft show where they'll pick the teams. So are we doing the post game after they do this? I guess so, yeah. We should yeah, definitely we'll have a response Yeah, we'll pod. do it after. Yeah. We'll have some reaction to it, see where we're right or wrong. I'll also, like, for the podcast peeps, I'll just post this chunk of our conversation, you know, and, and the YouTubes, right? So people could just watch our all-star takes all the way towards next week. But I just think it'll be cool. Like, I like that setup for yeah. sure. Televising it, you know, LeBron gets it. I think last year... It came out that Steph didn't want it to be televised. That's, that's what it was, yeah. It. Right? So this year, hey, have fun with it. I think it'll be pretty cool to see who they pick and why they pick. And also just, like, pick along with them. Do you know what I mean? Like, as who? oh, who are you taking fourth? Are you going to take Paul George? Or are you going to take Kyrie? You know what I mean? Like, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, first of all, you're, I, I'm sorry I even – First overall pick is Joel Embiid. I don't care <laughs> whose team I'm picking. It's, jo- team it's JoJo is, is your pick. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Well, I'll be interested to see what pick Mr. James Harden gets selected oh. because Mr. James Harden continues his epic, epic run. This is – as It's insane. Nope, the the history that he's – that he's putting himself in, and if he can keep this up. Now, my question to you, because I knew we were going to talk about Harden, mm-hmm. is who would you rather have at their peak of these high-scoring games? Would you yeah. rather uh, two thousand? What was it? Oh six, oh seven, Kobe or James? Oh, the Kobe fifty games or James Harden this season? This is going to sound really weird, but I'm picking Kobe because I don't. I can't comprehend fully what James Harden is doing right now. He's doing it on Do you know like, I mean? like five of 20 shooting from three. Like the yes. the craziest stat is, did you see the stat the other, the other day after the Knicks game where he's had 624 points straight that are unassisted? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Now like Reddit went back, I guess some Reddit user – went back and found a bucket from last night's game against the Knicks that looks like P.J. Tucker does should have recorded an assist on the point. Shouts to NBA Reddit, yeah, by the way. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> NBA Reddit, you are the best. But, here, oh. but even still, like, somebody was doing research to find an assist that went against this streak of 624 straight points of having unassisted points. To me, that's crazy. It is incredible what James Harden is doing. And obviously, you know, this would be a topic anyways because to get some of the statisticals out of the way, right? He's now 21 games in a row with at least 30 points. And the only other dude to do that is Wilt Chamberlain. And anytime it's you and Wilt at the top of a stat board, right? You've done good. If if the season were to end today, he'd end up with like 36.6 points per game. And it's like him, Jordan, and Wilt would be – those are like the top three points per game performers of all time. It's incredible, right? And this coming a day after he said he doesn't think he's had his MSG moment yet. Yeah. Well, dunking the ball to ice the game <laughs> while making that your 61st point at MSG, I think that qualifies, right? Dude, that but was a crazy game. As I said, though, Webby, the reason why I'm going with Kobe is because that's still a, a brand of basketball that I understand. And I, I'm not taking anything away from James Harden because what he's doing is incredible. I just can't comprehend someone shooting 23s in a game. Right? And only hitting you five of them. <laughs> 23s, but regardless of how many he hit, like you attempted 23s, like it's just not – and was 22 for 25 from the free, from the free throw line, right? It's just crazy, and I feel like what's happening now is you have the pace of play changing in the NBA, but also the team that he's on, like, 
Kenneth Fareed walked off the street and is starting yeah, for it. Right? Yeah, I was Austin watching them the other night. was taken off the scrap heap. And he's, their, he's starting He's for their it, second best right? player right now. <laughs> Dude, they have guys on their team I've never even, like, I've seen or heard of before. <laughs> it's incredible what he's doing, but the flip side is the way that the game is played now, and, is, and I mean the pace of play, right? Teams are going to get 100 points. So – the way that James Harden plays in terms of just ISO, ISO, ISO every time down the floor, he's going to get 30 by default, right? Like there's yeah. just not enough points to go around. Eric Gordon scored 20. And then the next highest after that is 11. Then it's eight, <laughs> right? Like, and that's do is that James Innes off <laughs> yeah. the bench? James Innes the third? Like Ty- Tyler Innes? So Tyler Innes? I don't know. What's this dude's name? I got to click on the link. Let me click on the name. James Innes. James the third. Innes. Yes. Okay. Shouts to Long Beach State. Yeah, right? there you go. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not knocking what James Harden is doing because it's actually incredible. It's so incredible that I can't comprehend what's going on. Right? Like, that's what I mean. I, I'm not trying to diss James Harden. I think it's so dope what he's doing. It's just, wow. And it was funny because last night I was doing the Wrap It Up pod, right? And because the Raptors are playing the Rockets Friday night, I was like, oh, let me just, I'm talking live. And I'm like, oh, you know, so Raptors get ready to try to slow down James Harden as the streak continues. Let's just see what James Harden had tonight. And I clicked on the box score. <laughs> and I almost choked. I did like a spit take at 61. I was like, what is happening? It, and it, it's, you're so spot on with this. It's like, I'm so confused how he's doing it. Because it's not yeah. like he's out there just wetting shots and he's on some incredible hot streak. Like, no, he's doing what James Harden does. He gets to the basket, and he's hitting a couple of three-pointers a night. Only now you're looking down at the stat sheet when it's at halftime, and you're like, holy shit, he's already got like 35 points? It's crazy. And the way that Twitter works nowadays, too, where you find that out instantly, and you can now go hunting for exactly. the game. Like, that's pretty cool, too. So much fun. But, again... And you know what's funny too, Webby? You brought up that Kobe season. I'm pretty sure that was either pre-Twitter or early Twitter. Pre-Twitter. But here's the thing. I remember when the buzz started building because Kobe had that run of 50-point games in a row, right? And I just remember we were doing March Madness. We were both working on March Madness at the score. And Kobe's run was so crazy that we did NBA highlights. Yeah, during March. I remember you, that. I remember yeah. that. During March Madness tournament. Yeah, we're like, we got to update you this in the NBA. Kobe Bryant scored 50 again. And it was just like, what is happening right now? Oh, man. But anyways, uh, James Harden gets set to play the Raptors oh, on Friday yeah. night. And arrested Kawhi Leonard, who's been out for four straight games of what the team's calling load management. <laughs> this has been a huge talking point among Raptor fans. Webby, I want... I want to get your take. Do you have a problem with Kawhi Leonard resting, but them calling it load management for four straight uh, games? Before we get to that, big shout-outs to the Wrap It Up podcast. Tomorrow, big game. Who's the guest host tomorrow? Can you let us in? I don't, don't even know. Oh, man, saying. that's a big one. Know. I don't even know. It'll be a surprise to me Chris, well. <laughs> Chris Paul might play, too. I did so see that. could be. I, I will that. be. Someone to get an assist on a James <laughs> There you button, go. Right? It's one I will be <laughs> tuning into. So uh, do I have a problem with the load management? I don't, but I bet Raptors fans do. <laughs> there's a, there's well, a lot that's... Your man's Brian There's Burke. a lot has been... Your man's Brian Burke was fired up about it. Did you hear what, that? What, like, as in, like, my tie is undone? Like... Yes, that <laughs> Brian what? Burke, yes. He was... <laughs> Exactly. Right. He was all Sportsnet employee. Like, what Sportsnet if, colleague. Well, yes. He was he was talking about like, oh, the fans, like uh it's not a good look for the fans because fans pay good money to go see the players and you know, that essentially was his take, which on one hand I do understand in theory, right? But on the other hand, if we care so much about fans, MLSE could like cut ticket prices yeah. for one, two the fans aren't going to be complaining when Kawhi's dropping 30 pieces. Well, playoffs, here, yeah. Right? <laughs> because this fan base has had enough years in a row of watching our star players fail in the playoffs. Whether we go down in whatever round, and I know I just said we, I guess it's a wrap it up <laughs> podcast that's in me right now. But whenever they go down, you know they're going to go down with Kawhi getting playoffs, 100%. And I'm okay with that. Uh, again, this, like, the team's not dumb, and Kawhi's not dumb. No. They know that they have a really legitimate shot to make the NBA Finals, 
and what is managing your load in, which is, by the way, we might have to give you a, a pause there. <laughs> Uh, might have to throw out the pause for managing your load, uh. but, but what is that honestly in January? You know, exactly. th this is exactly. about getting you ready for May and June. Yeah. Like forget about January 24th. Worried about June 24th, right? Is the NBA final still going on that? No, it's probably over by then. Let's go to May 24th. However, <laughs> May, May 2 four weekend. <laughs> However, I think that they should be a little more worried about the real estate choices that, our boy Kawhi is making. Well, that was my follow-up question, Webby. As the article dropped today in the LA Times, which I'll say is very misleading, but it says NBA star Kawhi Leonard slams down $13.3 million for a Southern California home. Now, the reason why I say this is misleading. Because West Southern West California West is very big. <laughs> Southern <laughs> California isn't just LA. I read this too, and I was like, but Oh, no, that's still, like, you know, hours away from Los Angeles. And the fact that it's the L.A. Times, right? Like, that's what makes it so deceiving, too. So it's like, L.A. Times, Kawhi just bought a house in Southern California. And it's like, wait a second. Then you read it, and it's like, oh, he bought a home in an affluent San Diego yeah. community or county community. And he went to San and Diego like, State. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. from yeah, he's from San Diego, right? And this is a point where Raptors fans, I'm going to talk you guys off the ledge because, again, I think Kawhi Leonard is leaving, but not because of not because of the fact that he bought a house in right. San Diego. But the hope that Raptors fans have, which we've been trying to tell you on this podcast from the get-go, right, is remember why you can't trade Norman Powell. If you remember the article from earlier this year, Remember, it was in like this, whatever, San Diego <laughs> right. Times Union or something like that. But the dude wrote the article and he had quotes in there from Norman Powell's mom. And for those who don't know, Norman well, Powell I is Well, I don't know from... about this. You don't remember this? No. We definitely talked about this on the podcast. It was after the Kawhi Leonard trade. And this guy wrote the article talking about how uh, Norman Powell is also from the San Diego area. His mom... At the time, when he first got signed to Toronto, they were all worried about like, oh no, like it's going to be so cold. We love the we love the warm weather, blah blah blah. But then she came to Toronto, and because she loved it so much, she loved the city, she loved the fan base, everyone's so nice. And because she loved it so much, she said that she was going to make a point to make a pitch as well to Kawhi's mom because they become friends within the basketball community as well. Okay. Do you remember this story? No. No. Yeah, so anyways, I bring that up just to tell Raptors fans, like, relax, just enjoy the season. It's the biggest yeah, message. Exactly, and that's all it comes down to with Kawhi. Enjoy now, the one year, enjoy the run, enjoy – because the other thing is next Thursday is also the trade deadline, mm -hmm. which I think Masai is going to try to do something. He's not – I don't think he's going to sit tight with this team. I think he's going to do something. But who would, who would he is, make a move for? Enjoy this one year. Who would he make a move for? Well, there was that story last week from uh, – Ken Berger in the what was it the Bleacher Report that said uh, rival GMs or executive a league executive said the Raptors have made it known in front office circles that they're interested in adding an elite shooting guard. Hmm. Dun dun dun! What does that mean, right? Well, who knows? Uh, hey, cool. I want Bradley Beal too, right? Yeah, but, but mean, you're not going to give up Siakam and yeah. first round picks for him. No, and I mean, I've had this conversation on, on the Wrap It Up pod before, but my thing is nobody's untouchable on the Raptors. Like, Siakam's not stopping me from getting uh, an all-star. That's just my opinion. Okay. But I don't think that Masai would give up Siakam. Like, I don't think he's in trade talks. I don't think they will give him up just because, obviously, you take a lot of pride in discovering a diamond in the rough at 20-whatever, right? The thing is, with Siakam, I just think there's so much pride in terms of, hey, we found this kid yeah. at number... 20 whatever and i think it was 25 or 26 somewhere around there but the point remains you're happy that you did that and i don't think you're just going to give that away i don't think but if i'm playing video game gm <laughs> i'm making whatever moves to get superstars because this year is championship or, or bust. bust yeah literally because Kawhi could be out the door the other thing and i know this the talk now from out of the wizards camp is that bradley beal is not available they're going to try to make the playoffs but here's the thing, right? If I'm the Raps, you have one year of Kawhi, but if you added Bradley Beal, 
Bradley Beal still signed for two more years, and Bradley Beal is only nine months older yeah. than Pascal Siakam. Bradley Beal's sick. Now, what about he, C.J. McCollum? I'd be in on C.J. McCollum. Yeah. And I think you you could get C.J. McCollum for a lot less. I do, too. But he's a great player, great shooter. And anyone that shoots threes, I'm in for that. And that's what the Raptors need at this point. Like, that's sure. what they really need. For sure. Definitely agree with that look. Uh, but, yeah, lots going on in Raptors land. Lots going on in the Eastern Conference. And, you know, while we stay in the Eastern Conference, let's talk a little bit because a huge blow to the Eastern Conference playoff hopes of the Indiana Pacers last night as they were playing against the Raptors and Victor Oladipo went down in a very, like, just awkward way. It was a very I was watching injury. it live, you know? And it was like, it looked like the sniper got him from the upper deck. But you yeah. you know it's bad when, A, you see the other players from the other team turn to the bench and wave the person over. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's bad, again, when the first person to reach the guy on the floor is a doctor. Yep. And then it's really bad when they put the towel over the leg. Exactly. The towel over the so leg true. is so brutal. As soon as I Not saw that, I was like, this is this is it for Oladipo's season. Yeah, his season is done. As the team announced today that he underwent an MRI, MRI that revealed that he has a ruptured quad tendon knee. And the thing is, I don't even know what that means, but that sounds serious, yeah. right? Like, once you hear ruptured quad and knee and knee all together yeah. right like that's just poor guy you feel bad for him because he was having a really good year the pacers were having a really good year and it just seems tough right because remember it wasn't that long ago the pacers went through something like this with paul george exactly obviously it was a little USA more basketball, gruesome too for sure but just losing your star player for a small franchise like that that doesn't really have that many opportunities when they can make you know like legit runs not like who knows they were, they were spicy this year though right they were in third place they were playing really well yeah they were to gonna be one of, end like that they were gonna be that team that when we get to the playoffs says nobody wants to play them exactly that's a great way to put it it's so true well either way you know best wishes to victor oladipo and hopefully he you know is back on the court soon as soon as possible and he's healthy again but that's a tough injury and a tough blow to the entire pacers organization but as one injured, as one All Star goes down, another one has returned to the lineup. This one in the Western Conference and joining what four other All Stars? Yeah, Bo Boogie and the Warriors. Webby, uh, how do you feel about this team? You know where I'm going with this already, but Boogie joins the Warriors. He's back in the lineup for them. He's been starting. Steve Kerr obviously made the decision that you know that's the play, that's a move. Yeah. Uh, as we speak, they just finished beating the Washington Wizards 126-118. And, I mean, you have a starting lineup of <laughs> Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, Boogie Cousins, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson. You're going to win a lot of games, right? You're going to win a lot of games like that. And I was actually just watching that game before uh, we uh, connected here tonight for the pod, and they were talking about just this. And they were saying that it's the first time that a team has started five All-Stars in the same game for three straight games in NBA history. The Celtics had done it in the 70s for two straight okay. games, but no team has done it for three straight games. Now, I'm with you on this. I hate it, and it makes me, want to, <laughs> makes me root against the Warriors even more. However, yeah. I'm really happy to see Boogie back on an NBA sure. court. And, like, that first game back for him – was like vintage, right? You know, like the dunk, the, the, mean mug. the fouling out. Yeah, not being yeah. able to control. It was great. It was fantastic. Yeah. The thing, too, do you know what? And and our regular listeners know my stance on the Warriors. I'm down on the Warriors. I have no time for the Warriors. But I will say this. I'm lightening up on the Warriors this year. You know, I'll watch them a little bit more. I'm not going to be, like, as hateful towards them. And when I say hate, I mean sports hate, obviously. I think they're all really nice guys, but you know what I mean? But the reason why I'm lightening up on it is because I think this is the end, right? Yeah. This will be the last season of this. Like, I think Durant sailed after this. Boogie probably should be able to get a much better contract next year after he proves that he's healthy this season. Some team will so be dumb enough to pay Draymond a crazy Supermax deal. But you know what I mean? But either way, I just think this is the end of this run, whereas – 
you know, next year, if you only have, oh, three all-stars, yeah. right? Other teams still, it won't be, you're, you're not like the crazy runaway favorites that they've been the past two or three years. So I'm, I'm okay with, I'm okay with the Warriors this year. I'll say that. Do you, much. How about do that you still think that they're going to win the NBA championship? I do, but I also don't think it'll be as easy as we think because because you have five all-stars, you're adding another wrinkle to it, right? So it's going to take a little while to figure out how the pieces fit, you know, and how the pieces fit in the regular season is going to be different to how they fit in the playoffs, right? Because other teams will be able to match up and, like, get Boogie out of the game or, you know, hunt Boogie or hunt Steph. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be a totally different look, and they need to figure out the regular season stuff first, and in the playoffs, it's going to be a different a different battle again. So there might be some stumbles along the way, but yes, I mean they still have to be the favorites. Who, you know, I I I want to see them go against LeBron. I was going to say, and I still think the trade's coming right? for the Lakers. I still think yeah. the trade is coming for the Lakers. And I saw the a ridiculous. Oh, I think I was listening to a podcast actually, one of the Ringer podcasts, and they brought up the question of like. Will the Lakers miss the playoffs this year? And I was like, that's completely ridiculous. Of course, a LeBron James team is not missing the playoffs. Yeah, off. that's 100%. But imagine LeBron against the Warriors in the first round of the playoffs. Like, I don't think that's going to happen, but imagine if it just set up that Why way. Why couldn't it happen? Yo, man. I, if, the Lakers do, Cause if the Lakers do make it, they'll be seven or eight, I think. I don't know, man. I think once LeBron comes back, like, they've held on – this long they've held on a full month forget LeBron. lebron when they get lonzo back they need they need lonzo ball back lonzo just saved himself from getting traded for anthony davis okay? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all true. lonzo just did by getting hurt but i know what you mean it'll it, it, lebron is not allowing his team to miss the playoffs i think they'll be able to like right now they're still only what two and a half games oh yeah three and a half games out of yeah. fifth right so like three and a half, what, four and a half games out of third. So it's so close in the Western Conference, and they didn't even lose that much. Like, they didn't lose that much ground with LeBron or lose as much ground as you'd expect them to lose with LeBron out of the lineup. But, hey, LeBron's chilling. LeBron's not worried. It's like he needed Christmas Day just to show that, yeah, I can play with these guys, and then now I'm going to take a a, a month off. Make sure I'm I'm okay for y'all. Boy, around the same time every year, you know, around the same time every year. Hey, I said last year, we talked about this last year, Webby, and I feel like people, you know, we we got to pat ourselves on the back every Every, once in a while. But we said last year that we thought the only reason LeBron was playing every game last year was because it was, he knew it was his last year in Cleveland. So it was kind of like his, you know, his goodbye Oh, I gave it my all in the last year. I played every single game in the regular season. I went hard. Remember? Yeah. And now here we are. Now, a year later, my guy's taking a month off in the middle of the year. It's amazing. Just rest that groin. But, yeah. Can't wait for the playoffs in the Western Conference. It's going to be a lot of fun, despite my distaste for the Warriors. It'll, It'll be still right. be great. Yeah, I think I, they'll be pressed more than they have in the past couple of years. For sure. For sure. Uh, another guy that has a little distaste for the Warriors and apparently every other team in the NBA. everybody else <laughs> is my guy, Russell Westbrook. What a week for your man's Russ. I mean, first he went up against your boys, the Sixers, and JoJo hard fouled him, which led to Russ getting up a little angry. And then a post-game exchange to which Russ explained that, you know, he just thought Embiid went a little too far, right? He, it, his push was a little too much. But then uh, the reporter asked Russ, oh, so you guys are cool now? <laughs> and what was Russ's response? <laughs> Do you remember that? Fuck no. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, Yo, that so is good. that is an awesome budding rivalry of two teams that, like, don't like each other mm-hmm. but are also set up in really similar ways. Yeah. No, totally. I, and they match up really well. And – I I sent you that uh, that they play again. I think it's February twenty eighth. Yes, and that is that is going to be big time must see basketball. That will be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that for sure. That'll be totally a good time. And you know what's funny? Embiid then 
because obviously the reporters go to Embiid, tell him what Russ said, and Embiid's response was pretty funny, saying that Russ is always in his feelings. <laughs> right? I love that. But here's my thing. Embiid is correct, but Embiid can't be mad at Russ for being like that when Embiid is no. very much in his feelings as well, always going at, you know, whether it's Drummond or other dudes he thinks he can punk off. Like, I just Who like them he stare down the other team. night? He stared down someone the other night on a block and, like, <laughs> stared him down and then got into his face as he was getting up. And it was like somebody on Twitter was like, oh, it's like Stone Cold Steve Austin when he used to tackle the guy and then start yapping at him in his face. But, no, absolutely. But it, this is exactly why we love the NBA and why this uh, generation of stars and talent that we are so invested in is because these guys are showing great emotion out there on the court and it they're competitive. It's not this oh everybody's hugging before the game yeah. and like uh, all their boys. No, like these are two very competitive athletes on very competitive teams that want to win, and that's that's what's entertaining. Exactly right. It's so much fun, and I mean for Russ, it's almost like a nightly basis, right? Because a couple of days later, Russ is getting into it with basically. Everybody on the Portland Trailblazers. Everybody in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> he was yelling at people on the bench. What? And it's like, it, oh, man. It, Russell Westbrook is one of the most unique athletes. And I don't think, like, he gets enough credit, not only for being, for doing incredible things on the basketball court, but for having the personality that he does yeah. and being able to play a team sport. You know what my thing is with Russ? It's like, you might not like his style of play or whatever, but if you were a fan of a team and he's your star player, oh. you would love that, right? Because you know that he's giving it his all night in, night out. And this this season, people need to understand, if you watch those games, I think he's hurt, right? Like, I think he's not. There's something like wrong with him. Like, you can't be that bad at shooting the ball without something being wrong with you. But it's also I mean, his he's... explosiveness isn't there. Like, he's not dunking the ball as much with the veracity. Right. Other than, you know, against the Blazers when obviously he was super pissed off at the end of that game. But, I mean, normally you, you kind of just notice Russ is not as explosive as you see him in normal years. And you mentioned his shot. He's shooting such a terrible percentage. But with that said, he's still averaging a triple-double this year. I know. I think he had another one tonight. And I love he had how another people, one tonight. I love how the narrative has swung so much, Webby, from – Russ averaged a triple-double, and it was so amazing. And it's like, oh, that's why he won MVP that year. To now averaging it's a triple-double for two more other seasons <laughs> in a row. And then people are like, oh, whatever. Do triple-doubles even matter that much? And it's no, like, wait, not what? Only, no, 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 not <laughs> like, how only, did we get here? <laughs> not only are people like, oh, whatever. It's almost like it's actively bad for him to get a triple-double <laughs> now. People are like, Holding it against him. <laughs> oh, he's just hunting stats. It's like, yeah, what? Okay, like, what are we talking about? You hunt assists? Like, what? Like, I don't know. But it continued for Russ against the Blazers. You mentioned that. We saw the shot of him. You mentioned he was talking shit to the bench. He was talking shit to Lillard, saying that he's been busting his ass for yes, years. for years. I love that line. That was awesome. <laughs> and then in the post game, Russell Westbrook was asked about fighting over Nurkic screens. And Westbrook said, quote, I ain't talking about this clown. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or, sorry, the report says it appears that Russ, under his breath, said, right. I ain't talking about this clown, to which Nurkic quote tweeted that and put on, like, did you see this, Webby? Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? He yeah. quote tweeted it with, quote, why not, Westbrick? Ha ha, <laughs> yeah. laughing emoji, and then hashtag ha ha. For those who might not know, why not is Russ's slogan for his Jordan brand campaign. So, yeah, why not Westbrook? This from Nurkic. Like, I didn't Yo, know Nurkic had that smoke. <laughs> you know? Hold on. Nurkic is having a great season too, man. He, he definitely is. He definitely is. I just find this whole thing funny, and it's what makes the NBA so incredible to me. But again, I find it hilarious. The, the other great thing, too, is that these foreign players – that for so long, I mean, when we were younger, like these guys came over from Eastern Europe and they had absolutely no personality. Yeah. They barely speak the language. Now, because of the age where they grew up and social media being mm -hmm. a big part of it, now all these guys are ready to clap back. 
<laughs> you yes. saw saw it with Canner and yeah. LeBron last yeah, year, yeah, and now yeah. Nurkic doesn't back down from anybody. Even Jokic is kind of a weirdo out there too. I love it. It's oh, great. It's so good. It's so good. It's so much fun. The NBA is such a great place, and that's why we love it so. Uh, it's great to be back with you, Webby. I know, like, we had a lot of fun doing this podcast, and you know, this is the original, right? Like, wrap it up is taking up a lot of time because obviously it's. 82 games in a season i but love it it's amazing i the, love this the, is the original up, where we just talk oh. shit about what's going on in the nba and it's so much fun to do and i'm glad that we're back at it again and we'll continue to be at it because there will be can. there will be no shortage of things to talk about in the nba exactly right and it's just such a good time as always and if you are familiar with said podcast, you know we close with something we call the Ask on Blast segment, where we talk about something that's going on in pop culture. And, you know, there's a few things going on in pop culture, and it's funny because I brought up the Fire Fest Festival doc to someone else, and they said, oh, I haven't watched it yet because I was getting caught up on the R. Kelly doc. And I was like, oh, God. That's a conversation for, <laughs> for, for another, another podcast. Day. Yes. But. Let's talk about the Fire Festival doc because I thought it was incredible. Oh. And for those who don't, who have no idea what we're talking about, which you probably should, it was this time around last year. No, it was last year. And I think it was. Was it two was years a, ago? No. Uh, oh, no, 2017. It was 2017. 2017. Yes, 2017. Yeah. And basically, these guys set up a festival and. Ja Rule was the one that really got a lot of the flack because obviously he's a name that we yeah. know, but he became like the face of it. But they threw this crazy festival on an island in Barbados. Bahamas. Right? Bahamas. Sorry, my bad. Um, in the Bahamas. And basically it's just a huge scam, right? So you had all these people paying thousands and thousands of dollars to go to this music festival. And when they got there, they're like they were supposed to have these nice villas. And instead, they're in like soaking wet tents. Right? Like there they no look food. like uh, like biodomes, little biodomes of the people. <laughs> yes. But the best part is, is that like this whole festival was set up because of this video that they brought all the models down to the Bahamas. Yes. They just shot them frolicking about and having a great time. And then they put this out there, like, "Hey, come and live like these models down in the Bahamas at this festival." Super luxury, super high class, super exclusive. And then when they got down there, it was a complete shit show. Yeah, I mean, the doc is, I mean, it was one of those things where watching it, Webby, I wanted to punch dude in the face. A guy's oh. name Billy McFarlane, is that his name? Yeah. He's just an A1 scammer, right? Like, I'm looking at this guy, and like, this guy's such a scuzzbag. And it's funny watching the, the shit eating grin that he has on his face most of the time during this doc. But. The thing was, as you mentioned, the plan, like how they executed the setup, like if they were able to pull it off, like it sounded like it would have been pretty crazy, right? But as you mentioned, I think they were too interested in the party more so than they were like the party that they had shooting the videos oh, with yeah. Instagram models, right? Like Bella Hadid, uh, Emily Rajatowski was there and they got them all to uh, take pictures the whole weekend while hashtagging Fire Festival, and that was basically the promo campaign. They got these social media Instagram models to post about it, which led you to a website to show you like all these crazy packages that cost thousands and thousands of dollars to get to this place that they had no rights on, right? Like my guy lied saying he owned uh, Pablo Escobar's island, island yeah. when he really didn't own it at all. And in fact, ended up getting kicked off of it because the guy that actually did own it said, yeah, you can do your shit here. But the only thing you can't do is mention Pablo Escobar's name because we're trying to change just the we're trying to change the image of the island. And what do they do do (laughs) on the video? (laughs) It was so good. First thing on the video, it's like the former island of once owned by Pablo Escobar. And And at that moment, they kicked them off. Right. So it was just a complete gong show. And my biggest takeaway from it was, one, that guy's a huge douchebag, Billy McFarlane. Two, I feel so bad for the people in the Bahamas that they scammed. Yeah, that was the worst part. I mean, I lived in the Bahamas for nine months. And the uh, tourist industry for that country, no matter what island you're on, is the number one economic, uh, like, 
it's what the economy of the country is built around is tourism. Yeah. And to have this as like a black mark on how people will think about the Bahamas and things. Yeah. The, the worst was the lady who ran the restaurant. Exactly. That was yeah, so yeah, sad. Yeah. And it's like, I saw though, they made a GoFundMe for, for her. her yeah. It, yeah. It went to over a hundred thousand dollars. I think someone was telling me that at work that, yeah, they set up a GoFundMe. So she was able to get money back at least because she was scammed out of so much money yeah. and what ended up happening for people who haven't seen it yet. And I mean, it's not a spoiler alert. Like this is all public knowledge. Watch the doc. Cause it's really, really good. But what ended up happening was they got basically all the locals to be working on setting up this, you know, festival that they had no chance of setting up because there was not enough time. And then he didn't pay any of the workers. Yeah. Like it's so crazy. It's so fucked up. And not to give away one of the craziest parts in it, but one of Billy's, like, number oh two or three henchmen, the levels that my guy went to. Which was to so weird. Sure. Which was so weird. Why? Like, that's what I'll I didn't say understand. I wasn't expecting that answer. And I don't want to give it away because oh, yeah. I want people to enjoy the yeah, surprise. Yeah, exactly. That would be moment. a spoiler. But, like, the lengths that my guy went to to make to try to make this concert happen or whatever it was crazy oh my god so so crazy. two things number one okay uh yeah like i said i lived in the bahamas for like almost a year and the number one thing that i loved was when they were the guy was saying that yeah you know like the taxi picked him up at the airport and the the taxi bahamian taxi driver was telling these white kids like yeah you guys are you guys are fucked where you're going <laughs> I was like, that is so, that is so Bahamas. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. No, my other thing is I have two really good friends who went. What? Yeah. Are you serious? They, I did not know. They Hold went. On. They, Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. They went to Firefest. Two of my really good buddies from Toronto who are like. And what's the story? That's in, How did I not know this? I, so two of my buddies, they're like, uh, they're, <laughs> they're really, um, uh, they're entrepreneurs, right? Like yeah, they invest yeah. in companies. They're, they're, they're really successful and they're great yeah. guys. They're yeah. just the most positive, uh, happy go lucky, fun loving people that you'd ever meet. And so yeah. all this was going down before we even knew what, you know, like what a shit show this was. Yeah. And they were like, I saw their posts and it's like, yeah, you know, going down to Firefest or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's pretty crazy. They're actually going to this thing. Cause I mean, I had seen the video of all the models and I was like, oh man, that'd be sweet. Go down and stay in a yacht and go to this festival. It'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, and then I started seeing the tweets that everybody did. Like, uh, this was, <laughs> we were sold a bill of goods and I was like, oh my God, Jalil and Latif are down there. Well, the thing with the food too. Yeah. Like cheese yeah, that's what, that was they the, were promised like gourmet meals. That was what I was seeing. So okay, but the best is then all the tweets start coming out, right? Like people are putting up videos of like, oh, this is where we're living. It's total squalor. Like the planes aren't picking us up. We're stuck here. And so one of them is of a, a random person's video that I saw is like it's almost like just a tracking shot looking over like that, okay. the house. Remember they were talking about that house where everybody was lined up at. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. that house and it's the front lawn and everybody is just like sitting down so tired, their heads down. And you know how they're talking about that beat that just keeps playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. So you can hear it. And all you see yeah. is my buddy Jalil on the front lawn <laughs> dancing, just dancing. <laughs> That's and, and, and like the caption of the video, oh, that's so good. the caption of the video was like, who is this guy still having a good time at Firefest? I was like, oh my God, that's, that's so my buddy Jalil. That's so sweet. <laughs> but yeah, he was telling me that they were down there for like, he was like, it was very sketchy for a time. He was like, how are we going to get home? Like that was the right? number like, one thing. Fucked. He was like, we are down here and there's like, there was, he was saying there was nobody like uh, from that the festival crazy. that was there, right? Just craziest. But the the, the I, documentary I can't recommend enough. Just fantastic. Yeah, I, Even if you've never heard of Firefest before, it tells such a great story and it and it does it in a really interesting way. Yeah, it's such a great job of storytelling and it's put on so there were two docs that were put out and I actually did research I have Netflix, I don't have Hulu, but I obviously watched the Netflix one, and then I, I looked up to see what people were saying the better doc was. 
and everyone said the Netflix one is better, but the Hulu one has him. Paid, yeah, they, yeah, they paid him. I think like two hundred fifty thousand or something like that to do the interview, and it's like I don't even know if I want to hear this guy talk. No, fuck him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm just kind of like I don't know if I want to hear this guy talk. But the other thing I will say is the people who put on the Netflix one, right? They get slandered in the Hulu one, obviously. But they also played a role in putting on this festival. And there are a lot of people that could have shut this shit down before a bunch of yeah. people got there and could have gotten seriously hurt. Like, there could have been some way worse stories that came oh, out of Oh, big that, time. Right? So kind of lucky in, in a sense that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But, yeah, great doc. Highly recommended. As always, we try to, we try to give you a little something other than basketball, a little nugget at the end of each podcast, right? For sure. Again, apologies to, you know, the ball on blast fans is it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you without a dope pod to step to. <laughs> That's right? it. Is that it? Is that it? Did I mess up the line? No, no, but, no. You nailed it. <laughs> but, you know, the holidays came and went and is busy time. And the funny thing is, if you remember back, our, our OG listeners will remember that we normally do a year end rap of music, right? Exactly. This year you might not have seen it even though we did record it, but here's the story of how it went down. And here's a funny story. And Webby doesn't even know this yet. Cause I haven't told them just <laughs> waiting to tell them during the podcast, because it's a funny glimpse into the life that is Sheldon Alexander and even a greater glimpse into why Sheldon Alexander is still single. This is a funny story. Oh, so follow no. me for a second here, right before the holidays, right yeah. around Christmas time. And think about it, right? Christmas parties, you know, all this stuff going on. And every single night there's something, right? You're, you're trying to make the schedule work. And well, you're just trying to get to the break too. Like everything's happening. You just need to get to that last couple of days where you can finally breathe. But until you get there, it's go, 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 go. Exactly, right? And so when you're doing stuff like this, like we're doing outside of work, it makes it even harder to then plot in when you're also plotting other extracurriculars. So one of during the week leading up to Christmas when we were going to do our uh, year-end talk, we were going to do it on the Thursday, but I called my guy Webby, and Webby said, you know what, Shelly, no problem. We can do it on Tuesday. It's all good. We can do it instead. Tuesday instead of Thursday, no worries. Cool. I think I'm slick. <laughs> I think I'm slick, right? Shelly's feeling good. Feel Here's himself. what happens. He's feeling feeling himself. myself, right? I'm like, hey, I'm making the schedule work. I'm fitting everything in. Uh, so a lady friend says, hey, let's go grab a bite to eat on Tuesday. I know I where say, the... oh, no. Cool. Well, no I know problem. Where going. I was supposed to tape the podcast at 9 o'clock, but I'll move it up, right? I'll move it up to 8. And I call my guy Webby. Webby, hey, you cool to tape it at 8 instead of 9? My guy Webby says no problem. I'm a fluid I'm, character. You know, I'm always yeah. laid back, whatever. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So she says, no problem. Let's meet at nine o'clock. I say, cool. Doing the pod at eight. Shouldn't be a problem. So we record the pod. Pod's going good. I'm, I honestly think Webby, I had so much fun recording that pod. It was a lot of fun. Fantastic. Just recapping the music and everything. Like, I'm so excited. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to time out great. Cool. I'm looking at the time as we're recording the podcast. And it's getting to, like, be about 8.45, 8.50, right? And the place that we're going to that we were meeting up wasn't far away from my house. It's like 10-minute Uber ride. No big deal, right? So in my head, I'm like, that's cool. No problem, right? We continue talking. We're everything's cool, right, Webby? We finish at right around like nine oh five. We finish right around like nine oh five. Everything's cool. I'm like, this is perfect. I FaceTime her and I'm like, hey, um, just finished the pod. I'm about to come meet you right now. And homegirl just gives me the stank face. <laughs> That's oh, just no. like, don't worry, it's okay. I should have known you were gonna be late anyways. <laughs> What? I've been standing outside in the freezing cold waiting for you, oh. and it's now 9.10, and I'm like, uh, oh. well, I was just finishing the pod. <laughs> I was finishing the pod. We were talking. We were grooving. We went a little late, and she's like, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it, and hangs up, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> then, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Then to compound it. So, of course, now I'm trying to, like, smooth it over. Oh. Like, she's still mad. Everything was okay, though, right? Smooth it all over. I'm thinking, okay, whatever, right? 
the next day when I go to edit said podcast, yeah. uh, there's a rap spot, right? Like there's a Raptor game the next day. Yeah. So my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do the Raptors pod. Then I'm going to edit the, the ball on blast here and review, put that up. Cool. So now I'm scrambling to do the Raptors pod. And as I set up, I have the, the, uh, chip in the camera and as I'm loading up the game, trying to get the, the feed going live, you have to click like the different things and it shows up like what's already on the card and me not thinking I'm just going to clear the card because that's just normally oh. what I do before I do it. And as I hit delete, it's like, no. And then I'm just sitting there like, I just deleted the whole pod. Wow. So now not only homegirl mad, but also but we've, podcast deleted. <laughs> we've got a lost episode like, out there. <laughs> a lost episode that's just out there in the airwaves. And then I'm just like, yep, that pretty much sums it up. And that was a, that honestly, Webby, in that moment. And I'm telling this story to the people as well to kind of enjoy the laughter. But that was a moment that told me, relax, hey, chill out, whatever, slow down, take some time, enjoy the break. Exactly. So right? now we're Try nice and refreshed, much. nice and refreshed. For the people who missed our breakdown of last year's music, uh, we like Nipsey Hussle, uh, Earl Sweatshirt, <laughs> yes. and Pusha T. But that should Pusha come T, yep. that should come as no surprise to anybody who listens to this podcast at all. <laughs> exactly. But we're here. It was just so funny, man. And the best part was so like obviously everything's fine with homegirl right Good. and it, the thing was it just turned into a running joke now so now every time it's just like yeah now, oh so you're gonna be late huh and i'm like all right anytime all right, you're anytime you're late too you have a built-in excuse uh, hey sorry baby <laughs> podcast you know podcast was just late. making sure the podcast actually recorded <laughs> yeah. this time right <laughs> well, at least you didn't go back <laughs> at least you didn't go back and like blame it on her like, oh, no, you know, no, if it no, hadn't no. been for you, that would have been the D-bag move. No, 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 Exactly. No, no. It was You're just, a better it was guy than that. completely all me. Like, it was completely all self-inflicted, right? And just, like, that's the completely. thing, going in a nine million different directions, man. But yeah, that's good. But we're but, refreshed here in 2019. Hey, right? We're here for, we're here to talk about ball at the end of the day. Apologies if, like, this is someone's first time listening and they're like, bro, I came to listen to basketball, <laughs> not your relationship, bro. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's someone listening right now like, yo, talk about the All-Star game. <laughs> enough of, yeah, enough about your love life. <laughs> uh, good times at all, as always, Webby. But now back in action. Let me know. Let the people know where they can find you, Webby. If they want to talk, you know, Firefest, Or if they want to talk the, Sixers. Yeah, just the, anything at all. just the best parts of TJ McConnell's game. You can just, <laughs> just go ahead and tweet me. At a Webster eighty four, uh, what a win against the Spurs last night! Uh, just, who is Jonah Bolton? Is my other question. Just eleventh guy off the bench. He was he was blocking Aldridge at the rim, taking it, just running the break, taking passes from Ben Simmons for dunks. It was great. Jonah Bolton, better than Jimmy yeah. Butler. Uh, how's your man's Corey Brewer oh, getting signed off the street and getting crunched out? How is Corey Brewer not already on an NBA team? That's what I didn't understand. He's a legitimate NBA player. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, tweet me or hit me on Instagram at AWebster84 uh, on both. And uh, my name is Sheldon Alexander. You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander on Instagram, Sheldon Alexander. And, of course, shout to the people who enjoy the Ball on Blast podcast as well as if you're new to this podcast because – you heard of it maybe through the Wrap It Up podcast or vice versa. You can tune into the Wrap It Up podcast live on Twitter at Shell Alexander after each and every Toronto Raptors game. But then that podcast, like this podcast, becomes, you know, a podcast that ends up just out in the world, the podcast world on iTunes, on SoundCloud, on Google Play. Just search On Blast Podcast and you get both of these feeds all Raptors talk or just all NBA, NBA talk. talk. Either way, we got the whole great goodness for you, right? You know it. And of course, and of course, a huge shout out to the YouTube community, YouTube people. Shout to you guys for supporting all the projects on the On Blast Network. Really appreciate you guys for tuning in. And hey, send Webby and I topics, things you want us to discuss, things that you guys see that want to you want to be a segment on the show. We'll talk, and of course, we interact with our fans because hey. 
this basketball is so much fun and the reason why basketball is so much fun is because the way that the fans interact with each other and with the players and with the game right? exactly uh it, it's happening every day we're always watching the games we're always on social media please interact with us we'd love to hear from you guys exactly so much fun and, and i guess bomani jones always says this it's like and if you get a chance to rate us on itunes give us a five because if you give us a four then i'm forced to think that you're just saying right? <laughs> <laughs> but again my name is sheldon alexander thanks for joining us and as a wise man once said i really did used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this this is the ball on blast podcast as always unpolished and unapologetic until next time see ya hey. this is ball on blast part of the on blast podcast network Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you like it, then subscribe and tell your friends. Holla. Boom, blast.